uh, whether he will continue on or whether he will finally decide to call this the end, the end of the road uh, for this particular pursuit. You can see there CHP, those three units with their guns drawn. The northbound 605 freeway is going to be closed a little bit north of the 10. And frankly, I'm a little bit surprised now because of the behavior we've seen uh, earlier in this pursuit that this driver's staying stopped for as long as he has been. Earlier, the window was rolled up. Or now the window's rolled up. Earlier, it was rolled down. It does appear that the vehicle's still on. And unless the suspect's run out of gas, uh, judging from that earlier behavior, like we've been saying, where he's been stopping in parking lots, stopping in the middle of other roads, uh, I would be very surprised if this driver decides to call it quits right here, right now. And we're on the move again. We're on the move again. Just like clockwork, when you see certain behaviors exhibited by these, uh, this particular suspect in the past, in this very pursuit, you have to think that he's more than likely to do it again. And here he is again, racing northbound on the 605 freeway, now taking an exit. This is going to be Los Angeles, I'm told. Exiting Los Angeles Street and going back onto the freeway. Not really blowing the red there because that was a green light and continuing northbound on the off-ramp back onto the 605. There might be an option for this driver to stay on surface streets. It looks like he's going to be taking that. Staying on River Grade Road. So there we go. Very interesting agitated behavior from this driver. Stopping and going and stopping for long periods of time where you might think that would be the end of it for this pursuit. But then uh, the driver continues on. It doesn't appear that there's anything wrong with the vehicle to uh, uh, cause him to stop. It just appears that he uh, has seems to almost have a change of heart for a moment and then continues on. As you see this one CHP officer staying uh, very close to the bumper of the pursuit vehicle offset a little bit to the right. You have to wonder if uh, they may be preparing for a pit. Uh, these are pretty desolate streets uh, at a very late hour on a Friday night, so it's definitely uh, kind of a perfect area for a pit if uh, CHP decides to do that as we continue on River Grade Road approaching Commerce. We're seeing about 40 miles an hour from this driver continuing northbound. Tracking along the 605 north, but not using the 605 north. And we're slowing down again, approaching the intersection, Live Oak Avenue, making a right turn to the east. officers were close behind this vehicle, they were able to determine or at least see that there was only one person inside the vehicle. Signaling, using his left turn signal, and we're continuing on Stewart Avenue from Live Oak, making a northbound turn now. This could take him back towards River Grade. And here's the River Grade intersection now, setting up for a left turn, which would take him kind of in a southwesterly direction. 
And now we're stopped, uh, and, and we've we've seen this before earlier in this pursuit, uh, hearing from uh, officers earlier that uh, this person was stopping at red lights. So it's uh, just kind of curious behavior. Now you have two CHP officers close behind, continuing southbound on River Grade. Not a lot of traffic in this area. Pretty much an industrial area here south of Irwindale. Eastbound Live Oak now. At this point, CHP is just kind of uh, in a follow-along mode here. They're still in pursuit. This isn't a following. This isn't a tracking. This is a full-fledged pursuit. Originally started by Monterey Park PD. They uh, are saying that they wanted to pull this person over for uh, suspected DUI. And copy. Coming to a stop again, intersection of Live Oak and I believe that's Riverdale again. Or Stewart Avenue, thank you. CHP with their doors open. This is uh, kind of their normal procedure when the driver comes to a stop. But, as we've seen in the past, uh, this driver will do that. Will come to a stop, uh, wait for a number of minutes, and then continue on again. As we see this uh, CHP unit getting right up close, about one car length behind, and another CHP uh, unit, one car behind that one. Northbound river, gr river grade. Northbound river grade. Kind of hanging out in the same general area. Uh, CHP dispatch actually ran the plates on this vehicle and it came back to an address in Duarte. So uh, this kind of goes back to what you usually see with some of these uh, pursuits is drivers like to stay in areas that they know. And because this... Uh, vehicle may be registered to an address in Duarte. This driver may be familiar with the San Gabriel Valley and may be most comfortable staying in this same general area, staying on these surface streets and staying kind of in the 605-10-210 corridor. But we'll see what happens. Anything could happen at this point as we go westbound Arrow Highway from Rivergrade, just south of the Santa Fe Dam area. Oh, he's st still going west, northwest bound. And now what we have going on is the L.A. County Sheriff's ship is going to tap out from this pursuit and uh, let the CHP helicopter take over just in time for this driver to get back on the northbound 605. Not exactly accelerating to freeway speed, sticking at about 30 miles an hour, approaching 40 miles an hour. You can see the night sun now from the CHP helicopter lighting up this pursuit. Copy.
And now we're kind of matching up to freeway speeds now, hitting 80 miles an hour in that number three lane, that one CHP unit staying right behind the suspect. We have two law enforcement helicopters remaining over this one for now. That uh, LA County Sheriff's Deputy Helicopter is uh, staying with this one along with CHP down low. We're coming up on this uh, 210 interchange. It looks like we're going to be committed to the off-ramp. I believe that's going to be to uh, Duarte Road. And that just goes along with what we were saying earlier, that uh, this vehicle is registered to an address in Duarte. Uh, so it does make sense that this suspect would want to go back to that general area, someplace uh, where he's familiar. Coming up on Huntington Drive, the driver will have the opportunity to go deep into Bradbury, or he can make a left westbound turn on Huntington Drive and go into Duarte. Kind of hanging on to that right lane now. Looks like he's setting up for a right turn. I believe that right turn signal is on. And a right turn eastbound on Huntington Drive now. Very slow speeds below the flow of traffic. Huntington Drive passing Chestfield Drive now, making a southbound turn. The sheriff's officer is calling 10 miles an hour. Now we're turning into an alleyway. This is interesting. You have to wonder if this is the neighborhood where this uh, driver lives or if it's nearby or if uh, he knows somebody in this area. Uh, obviously, if you turn down an alleyway, you, you run the risk if you don't know the area, the, there could be uh, an obstruction or a dead end or a, a, a cul-de-sac. But this driver seems to be rolling down this alleyway as if he knows the area. At least that's the impression that I'm getting. This is just south of Huntington Drive. And there isn't the option to get back onto Huntington Drive from there. They're going to have to go around going through the residential area. Maynard Drive continuing southbound, indeed. But this is kind of a difficult area. The driver can uh, eventually hit Central and try to get back on Huntington uh, that way. But uh, this, this driver could really get himself in a pickle here if he doesn't get out of these residential areas. There's a large sports park nearby. That could be an opportunity for a foot bail. And you know these CHP officers are taking these uh, things into consideration as we hop onto a main road here. I believe we're calling it Mount Olive Drive. And that looks like Central. Yes, that is Central. Okay, so that was what this, uh, what this driver was able to do to get back onto. Uh, on, on my map, it didn't appear to be a major street, but it... it you know, it's 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 big enough to uh, speed up a little bit, or at least uh, in terms of this pursuit. We're continuing westbound into Central. Uh, Duarte, where this vehicle is registered, so that uh, that might give one the impression that this driver might be going back home. This uh, this person has, has uh, had enough of their joyride. They've been being chased by CHP for the better part of about 45 minutes now. And uh, Monterey Park PD, which actually started this pursuit, Coming up at the intersection of Central and Highland, setting up for a left turn southbound under the 210 freeway. Continuing southbound on Highland, the 210 freeway is now in this driver's rearview mirror.
Yeah, but he's he, he's just going west now. Yep. The driver came up on a right angle intersection from Highland Avenue and uh, had to make a right turn on Duarte Road because there's no other options there. Uh, City of Hope is going to be nearby here if this driver continues making a left turn there. That's going to be the parking lot for City of Hope Cancer Center. The driver has his hands out the window, appears to be gesturing to officers, and then raises up the window right away. CHP officers out of their car again, and they're going to have to get back in their car as this driver continues onto what's called East Circle Road on the map, but this is really the parking lot for City of Hope Cancer Center, which uh, there are ways to get out, but it just becomes a sticky situation for uh, someone trying to get away from law enforcement, obviously. They could, they could go into a parking structure. We've seen a lot of pursuits end that way as we slow down past seeing the entrance for the parking structure. And we're continuing southbound now through the City of Hope uh, side streets here. And there's another parking structure entrance on the south side, and that's where this driver's going to enter. He's going to enter a different entrance of this parking structure, and all those CHP units are going to follow. Now, with that said... This pursuit will be out of uh, view uh, of us up here in Air 7 HD and the law enforcement helicopters. The officers, okay, there he is coming back out of the parking structure. The officers on the radio were saying that he just went in and came back out. So sometimes you have in those situations uh, the vehicle pull into the parking structure and then someone gets out and runs when there's no officers behind them. But you had three CHP units enter the parking structure with you. There's uh, very unlikely that this suspect was going to get away. You have these other CHP units and some local PD blocking traffic because the pursuit was just in that area, so they were still in the vicinity. Someone on a bicycle nearby trying to get a better view. Obviously not advised. And we're continuing eastbound on Duarte Road now. We're at that uh, right angle turn where Duarte Road forces you onto Highland Avenue. Right turn on Business Center Drive. And I can tell you right now, there's not much there. This might even be a dead end unless the driver makes one of these... Uh, uh, turns between the businesses to get back out on surface streets, but uh, unless this person knows that already, they might get stuck in one of the dead ends here. There's going to be the option for this driver to make a right turn or a left turn, and there he is making the left turn, and that left turn is going to give him the option to get back out. Probably me. The CHP is calling this 20 miles an hour, continuing westbound on Evergreen Street, just south of the 210 freeway. Just west of the 605, not affecting the freeways at all right now because we've been on these surface streets in deep industrial areas. Coming back onto Highland. Right turn signal on. And we're going to continue. And he's possibly coming to a stop right there in the middle of the road. That CHP unit very close to uh, make an impact with the bumper. And you have to wonder if CHP is considering doing a pit right there now that there's not a lot of traffic in the area. They were setting up for a felony stop and then the driver continued through under the bridge. 
So we'll see if he pops out on the other side. And there he is, continuing through the intersection of Highland and Central Avenue. And we're going to continue northbound now. We'll have the option to get back onto Huntington Drive. Now eastbound on Huntington Drive. CHP's talking about possibly setting up spike strips because we've kind of remained in the same general area, so they may set up for those soon. Now we're making a right turn southbound on San to Domingo Avenue. Coming up to Central again. Looking at making a right turn on Central. Area is continuing westbound on Central. Back towards Highland. So we're almost doing circles around this area. There's a condo complex to the north there. Now CHP does know where this uh, vehicle is registered to, so they have an officer at this person's house as well. I don't have that address handy, but uh, it is registered to an address in the Duarte area, which is uh, just to the west of here. Continuing westbound on Central from Highland. Still at these slow speeds, 15 to 20 miles an hour. Coming up to Duncanon. Barely breaking 20 miles an hour here. This extremely, uh, what's turning into a slow speed pursuit. We did see 80 miles an hour on the freeway, but always on these surface streets, we've been at these very slow rates of speed. Approaching Buena Vista Street right now. If the driver continues on Central, Yeah, that was the last option for this driver to get on the freeway, at least from Central. He'll come up to another right. Uh, yeah, so once he gets past Buena Vista Street, that'll be the last chance for this driver to uh, get on the freeway from there. He'll, gonna, he'll uh, come up to a right angle intersection after that, but we'll see what happens at this Buena Vista Street intersection. CHP officers are now out of their vehicles making announcements to the driver. You see a number of articles there through the back window.
we're still at a complete stop. This driver parked slightly ahead of the line there, and now we're continuing. The light turned green, and we're continuing westbound on Central. Now that we're on the west side of Buena Vista Street, this driver will have to hop back over to Huntington Drive to be able to get anywhere. North on Mountain Avenue now. Uh, not Mountain. North on Bradbury Avenue. Now we're kind of hanging a left here into a parking lot. Pretty empty parking lot here. You have to imagine most of these businesses are closed at this hour. This looks like a Target here, but it's past 10 o'clock. The Target's probably closed. Looks like we're going to continue past the Target, though. Making a southbound turn now back towards Central Avenue. That was a green light going through that intersection, continuing westbound central. There's an option now for this driver to get back onto the ten or the two ten freeway. Copy. Stopping at that intersection, a four-way stop, making a southbound turn under the 210 freeway. Home Depot on the other side, that's Shamrock Avenue. Continuing uh, now to make a left turn, coming eastbound now on Evergreen from Shamrock. And for the better part of the last 10 or 15 or so minutes, we've just kind of done circles around this General Duarte area. And I think one can safely assume that this is an area where this driver is particularly familiar with, being that the vehicle is registered to an address in Duarte. Coming to a stop at the red light again. Oh, that CHP unit on the right side of the screen getting out of their vehicle. I think that officer may be considering deploying uh, a certain device. Yep, there it is. Spike strips are out, and this CHP officer is running to deploy the spike strips and doesn't quite make it, doesn't quite make it to the vehicle, and the driver speeds away, makes a right turn continuing southbound on Mountain,
This is Eyewitness News with live breaking news. Chris crossing the San Gabriel Valley. Breaking news tonight, a high-speed pursuit. Let's go to Gabe in uh, Air 7 HD. Gabe Santos. Well, Bark, this has been uh, kind of an interesting pursuit with very erratic and unpredictable behavior. We've seen this driver wanted for DUI. Uh, originally was a Monterey Park PD pursuit. Monterey Park PD started this pursuit uh, in the Monterey Park area, uh, going through West Covina, hopping on the 10, and that's when CHP took it over. The driver eventually came northbound on the 605 to the San Gabriel, uh, to the Duarte area and the Bradbury area, and the reason why we think is because this vehicle is actually registered to an address in the Duarte area. And that's where we've kind of been ever since. This driver has been making uh, loops around surface streets, around industrial and residential areas, going at slow speeds and only picking up speeds when uh, at, at rare intervals uh, when uh, CHP gets too close. And then the driver goes slow again. And now we're making a right turn now. It looks like on South California Avenue, possibly that driver trying to go toe to toe with oncoming traffic there and we're continuing northbound now picking up speed a little bit so we see uh, very interesting behavior where the driver kind of does something erratic picks up speed does something crazy for a little bit and then acts really slow and steady for a while and when this driver is in one of those modes where he's acting slow and steady he's stopping at red lights he's stopping for other vehicles he's, he's even signaling uh, left and right turns in areas where there's no other vehicles around uh, so just kind of this dichotomy of behavior going from completely aggressive to completely calm and CHP staying right behind this driver throughout. We did see the opportunity a few seconds ago right before we came on air where a CHP officer tried to deploy a spike strip right in front of this driver, but the driver was able to continue and miss that spike strip. As you see, it looks like the CHP airship fly through the bottom of our frame there, and we're continuing now on Enterprise Way eastbound now, still kind of hanging out in this industrial uh, southern part of uh, Duarte. Uh, it just seems like this driver is familiar with this area, and he's intent to kind of stay in this this part of the northern San Gabriel Valley, at least for now, but anything could happen at this point. We've even seen times where this driver has come to a complete stop, even on the freeway, for periods of up to five minutes, where you, what would think that the pursuit would be coming to an end, and then and then the driver continues again. So now we're continuing eastbound uh, through the uh, Duarte area, approaching uh, back towards the 605 and the Santa Fe Dam, if this driver continues a little further uh, eastbound as we get to that uh, Buena Vista Street intersection. This is in intersection where this driver has been before. If he makes a, a, a left turn, that'll be an area that he's very familiar with because we've been through that area a lot. But no, we're going to make a right turn here coming southbound on Buena Vista Street. Uh, looks like further into, uh, oh, and now we're pulling into a parking lot here. And we've done that before. We've done that multiple times in this pursuit. We pulled into a Target parking lot earlier. I'm not sure if there's a dead end there, if there's a way for this driver to get around. And it does look like there is. And there's somebody kind of pulling onto the other side of the road, which may try and uh, get in the way of this pursuit. But no, this driver continues and makes a right turn. Looks like uh, we'll get that cross street for you shortly. Duar that's, that is going to be Duarte Road. And we're going to continue eastbound past uh, Cinco Robles Drive. And uh, just as I was saying when we were in that parking lot, uh, we've been in multiple business parking lots before in this pursuit, and the driver just continues through them and then hops on out. So it doesn't appear that uh, anytime this driver, you know, in any other pursuit, you would think when that happens, the driver would be coming to a stop or looking for a place to foot bail, but that's not what we're seeing in this pursuit. We're just seeing the continued insistence to keep on going as we approach uh, Isidore Familion Way, uh, continuing eastbound on Duarte Road, Mark. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a DUI suspect, and he's uh, behaving sort of like he's under the influence because if he was really trying to get, a, uh, to get away, he'd be driving faster. He'd be thinking about a place to foot bail, but he's not doing either one of those things. Let's take a look now at this attempt to try to... Uh, that's one of those uh, cyber trucks right there, coincidentally. But uh, here's the CHP officer trying to get yeah. deploy the spike strip, and yeah, it didn't quite work. He didn't get to deploy it, really, before the guy took off. So that uh, didn't work. There have been no attempts that we know of to pit to use the pit maneuver against this uh, individual right now, although when you look at the speeds... And the fact that the streets are virtually empty, there are a lot of opportunities, as, uh, for example, right here. He's, if he makes a turn, they could give him a tap, and that would spin him out if he decided to do that. 
uh, there are opportunities to, to be a little bit more aggressive here, but CHP officers opting to hang back. Uh, the speeds have not been aggressively high. Uh, the hazard to the public is not that great. The streets are virtually deserted right now, both the vehicles and people. Now it looks like he's pulling into an apartment complex. Yeah, pulling into another uh, parking lot area here. It's hard to tell if this is a par uh, apartment complex or some kind of storage area. Now back onto a main street. So we've 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 really seen this a lot. So in other situations uh, where you see a pursuit kind of go through a, a you know a business area or even a an apartment complex, you would think that this driver is starting to uh, look for a place to get out and run, but that's not what we've seen in this case. Uh, we've, we've seen this driver continue driving through parking lots. Uh, it doesn't appear that this driver is trying to, you know, uh, wreck other vehicles or uh, endanger anybody for all intents and purposes besides just being in a pursuit and uh, not stopping for uh, law enforcement and kind of behaving erratically. Uh, but it does raise the question, Mark, of, uh, you know, what, what this driver, what's going through this driver's mind as we've pretty much just done a circle uh, going from Highland Avenue to uh, uh, Business Drive, I believe that, that was, and now back onto Highland Avenue, continuing northbound. Uh, towards the 210 freeway, but I don't believe there's going to be an option for the driver to get on the 210 freeway uh, from the south end. There may be from the north end, though. And once again, we have to say uh, that it, we, we do believe that the reason this pursuit, you know, even though it started in Monterey Park and trekked north, we do believe that we're kind of staying in this uh, Duarte area or the area just east of Duarte because the driver, uh, for one, the vehicle's registered to an address in this area, and two, that uh, implies that the driver probably knows someone in this area, and that makes us think that that's why this driver is kind of staying in this general area. As we continue westbound on Central Avenue, a little closer to the 605 freeway than we've been in quite a little while, even though you know th this, this pursuit did come from that direction initially, but we've kind of stayed west of the 605, and now we're trekking back towards the 605. So there may be an option for the driver to get back on the 605 from here if he so chooses. And uh, I want to quickly, Gabe, uh, point out out that uh, you may not be able to see it, but uh, on our screen right now, on the left is live video, on the right is video from earlier, and you saw the suspect at several points, or at least at one point there, stopping, uh, gesturing, rolling the window down, and appearing to try to speak to the pursuing officers, along with several other times that he stopped. Um, what, what sort of behavior, how many times has that happened, and also have there been any instances where he has... Uh, either collided with or come very close to colliding with anyone? Well, it, I haven't seen any instances where this driver has come close to colliding with anybody, but we have seen a number of times where this driver has come to a complete stop. I've counted at least uh, three or four times where this driver has come to a complete stop and stayed at a complete stop for a number of minutes, even uh, to the point where CHP officers got out of their vehicles, they had their guns drawn, they were making call-outs to the driver, and in any other pursuit situation, you would think that that would be the end of it. But this driver is just continuing on as we go, it looks like continuing on Maynard Avenue. This is a little bit of a uh, residential area just south of Huntington Drive. There is the option to get on the 605 if the driver gets over to Huntington Drive, which there is the mm -hmm. option to do. Uh, and as, as we kind of go through these narrow streets in and around these residential areas where, Mark, you have to wonder if uh, one of these neighborhoods is where this suspect actually lives. Uh, it was interesting. You saw that person as we made that uh, right turn there. There was somebody in the back of one of those townhouses that was watching from behind the fence uh, and then uh, kind of ran in an, another direction. So that's let's kind of bookmark that, see if he heads in that direction because... Uh, if he is, if it's possible that he could be on the phone with somebody, uh, we don't know whether that might be a, a, a part of that. But we're going to keep an eye on this, of course. And again, if you live in this area, this is Crestfield Drive and Maynard Drive in the Duarte area, uh, a pursuit so far of a DUI suspect. But if you're in this area, uh, keep your doors locked, keep your windows locked. And uh, if you want to keep an eye on this, then uh, the best thing to do is watch it uh, with us right now. Watch our coverage as opposed to going outside like that person did because you just never know how these things are going to turn out. You want to stay safe in your home and uh, not have somebody perhaps foot bailing and running into your living room. We don't want that either. Um, but it's he's going down an alley at a must. Yeah. I mean, what's, what would you say his speed is right now? I mean, 20 miles an hour? 
Yeah, if uh, Josh turns on the speedometer up here on Air 7 HD, it's uh, it's it's less than that. We're, we're barely breaking 10 miles an hour. And, uh, CHP was calling that an alleyway. It looked like it was the alleyway north of Maynard Drive. We're coming up to Las Lomas now, and it looks like this driver is trying to decide what to do. They can pit him the right left. now. They could yes, use they, the pit maneuver right could. now, they and could. they could spin this car out, and that might put this thing to an end, but they're electing not to do that. Yeah, very curious, Mark. They've they've had a lot of opportunities in very wide open streets at very slow speeds. I'd be very curious to find out uh, why they did not use the pit maneuver in this uh, particular situation. As we cut through a corner here, just to get over to Huntington Drive, as you see one of the local, uh, uh, that looks like LA County Sheriff's up there at the top of your screen, also keeping an eye on things in the area. But CHP maintaining control of this pursuit because we're still in the vicinity of the 210 and the 605 freeway as we continue eastbound on Huntington Drive now. This driver has given up his opportunity to get on the 605 South, which uh, I'm not at all surprised by once again because we do believe that the driver knows somebody in the general area, although now as we head eastbound, we're kind of heading away from that area that uh, this driver probably knows somebody in, uh, and we're going to head more towards uh, uh, Azusa, uh, a little bit further over to the east. Okay, well... Um it's interesting that when they have opportunities to use the pit maneuver, they're not doing it. Uh, and they did try to do a spike strip a little while ago, and uh, that didn't work. Um, and so now they're just, maybe they're just content to stay behind him for a, for a while here and not necessarily try to force him into custody, but maybe he'll run out of gas or sober up or something or just eventually decide to give up but uh he's not getting away he's not even really trying to get away that's what's interesting about this one is uh he's just kind of cruising along circling a neighborhood and uh going at fairly low speeds and then like here's another opportunity if they had a chance to wanted to do to do the pit maneuver they could um, yep, could have done it there could have done it there every time he takes a turn and he's at a certain speed they could do that they could do it right now on a regular uh on a straightaway uh, the street's pretty wide. Uh, there is a median, but not a not a, a a barrier there, so that may be a factor in why they decide not to do it here. And there are other vehicles right now in this in this space, but uh, there have been Getting plenty of left opportunities. Turn lane now, I believe uh, that's going to be a shopping center with a little bit of a cul-de-sac there at the end. He's going to be turning into a business. It's a McDonald's. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're absolutely. I right. can There's spot one of those there. a mile away. <laughs> There's the McDonald's on Irwindale Avenue. Uh, we'll see if this guy pulls in through the drive-thru. It looks like he opts not to. Those people in the McDonald's drive-thru probably a little surprised to see a pursuit go by as we now go north on Irwindale Avenue back towards Huntington Drive. So, you know, uh, when you think this driver is going away from a place that he knows, then he does a maneuver to head back down that way. And uh, we'll see if that's the case if he makes a uh, westbound turn, even though right now we're making an <coughs> eastbound turn on Foothill now. Uh, continuing away from that area that he knows. So you saw some spectators down there at that gas station, at that Arco station with their phones out watching this all uh, happen. Here's another opportunity for a pit maneuver. They're not doing it. The uh, wide so, open streets here, yeah. Mark. No oncoming traffic. Uh, I'm, I'm very surprised that CHP is not uh, kind of you know, taking the reins on this one and trying to bring an end to this. Uh, you, you have to wonder if they have some other um, information, possibly the uh, the uh, mental state of the driver. That's always something that uh, officers have to consider now. Uh, so that may be uh, at play in terms of their decision on whether or not to pit this driver. But they are uh, feeling that they can use spike strips in uh, certain instances. But now as we head further and further away from an area that this driver knows, as we go northbound, on Todd Avenue, uh, things are going to start getting unpredictable for a little bit until we get back to that area uh, that they think the driver is uh, familiar with. But for now, uh, this driver is just kind of driving aimlessly in the foothills now. We're entering Azusa into the uh, residential area of Azusa. And if this driver continues northbound, I mean, we're going to end up in the uh, in the in the mountains or one of the canyons here, uh, which would be quite an interesting turn of events. Uh, but we'll see what happens. I think the uh, the next opportunity for a main street this driver will have to take is going to be Sierra Madre Avenue. If he continues northbound, he can make a right on that and continue uh, to the east as we slow down again for no particular reason as we slow down almost to a complete stop and like we've mentioned before in this pursuit we've seen that before he has both of his hands out the window now 
and then he puts them back on the steering wheel and pushes the gas again. So just continued erratic behavior, making this highly unpredictable and very hard to figure out what this driver is going to do, making a right turn now. I believe that's going to be 10th Street. Uh, this driver could have gone all the way to Sierra Madre and had kind of a a uh, wide open street to take you know further out east but instead he chooses to stay on these minor side streets uh which you know going back to the thing about being familiar with it uh, with the uh with the uh, local area that uh this this might be a street where this person has worked before or uh just familiar with for some other reason uh because i can't think of any other reason why you'd want to stay on these minor streets while you're trying to get away from the cops yeah, and uh, now it's getting a little bit more residential. It seemed like it was empty on the left side of the road and industrial on the right. Now you've got uh, what looks like residential on the left and uh, more uh, business on the right as well. So it's getting into a more uh, populated, busier area. Um, and that's going to be a factor on whether they, they decide to take any more aggressive tactics here. One wonders if uh, there's an officer waiting up ahead with uh, the spike strip to try to do that again. Maybe... Uh, you know, he's, he, is, he had been fairly predictable in, in the way that he was maneuvering around, trying to stay in kind of a, the same general area. But uh, that, does, that pattern got broken a little bit, and we'll see if he reestablishes it. And if uh, that happens, then they would have a sense of where he's going, and they can put that spike strip out and maybe actually get those tires this time instead of uh, what happened last time. Uh, yeah, uh, obviously we had that missed spike strip attempt earlier, but now that we're kind of on uh, other streets that this pursuit hasn't been on uh, thus far, it's kind of anyone's guess, uh, guess as far as where this driver is going to go. We're continuing southbound on Vernon. Uh, we could get back to Foothill Boulevard, which would give him uh, some options to go east or west, possibly get back on a freeway. Uh, and we're approaching that Foothill Boulevard intersection now, albeit at very slow speeds. You see, it looks like uh, local PD up at the top of the frame. They are keeping an eye on the intersection. And CHP is just going to come up slowly behind this driver as we go behind a tree here. Uh, uh, we're, we're coming to a complete stop again, and now we're continuing through the intersection. So very odd that the driver deciding to uh, follow the rules and stopping at red lights, and now we're making a right turn coming westbound on Foothill Boulevard. This is back in the direction of Duarte if we continue in this direction. Uh, but we came to a stop for a little bit there, and now we're continuing westbound again uh, as we continue back towards Duarte. Any indication that there's anyone else in the car along with him? It does not believe uh, to be the case, Mark. Uh, when CHP officers were very uh, close to the vehicle, very close to the bumper, they made a call out on the on the vehicle that they can only see one person in there. Um, the windows are pretty clear. It doesn't appear that they're tinted. As this one CHP officer gets very close there, it uh, looks like he, he was going to overshoot the pursuit vehicle as we go northbound on Todd Avenue. No, he's gesturing Again, out the we, window. We, We've been on Todd Avenue before, yes, gesturing out the window again, making a left turn into a business, I believe. We'll see which business it is this time. It looks like maybe an unoccupied uh, business park right now. <clears throat> but uh, to I'm answer sure your question, Mark, here. no, it, 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 it uh, just appears that there's one person in the vehicle. We were able to zoom into the back window earlier, and there's a lot of uh, articles kind of spread around the back seat. Um, unsure what that means, but it does appear that it is just the driver, a very aggravated driver, as the solo occupant of this vehicle now continuing. Uh, let's see, looks like we're back on Foothill Boulevard, I believe, continuing westbound towards what we believe to be this driver's home. And what's the speed right about now? We're showing speeds of about uh, 40, 50 miles an hour, kind of hovering in that area, which a little bit. It's a little bit faster than we've uh, been at earlier in this pursuit, so I'm not sure if something spooked the driver a, uh, a, few, min a few minutes ago to kind of provoke these higher speeds as we make a left turn southbound on Irwindale Avenue. And that CHP unit getting very close again as if almost to set up for a pit, but we haven't seen any or heard anything to indicate that a pit is uh, imminent here. We've, we've uh, heard CHP talk about spike strips, but we haven't heard anything about pits. And now there's the freeway on-ramp now. That's going to be for the, looks like the uh, westbound 210. And this is going to be east of the 605. 
So this driver will have the option of continuing westbound on the 210 or taking the 605 again or getting off on an exit that would have him back in Duarte, which we know is an area that he's familiar with. But for now, we are ramping up to freeway speeds about uh, looks like 60, uh, almost 70 miles an hour in that far right lane. You saw that vehicle over there in the shoulder. Not sure why that was. We've seen this driver drive in the shoulder on the freeway when he was on the 605 earlier. But right now, we're kind of holding on to that slow lane as if he's getting ready to exit. There is the option, once again, up ahead to take the 605 south. And we'll see if that's what this driver decides to do as we continue uh, approaching 70 miles an hour. Uh, through the Irwindale area. Once again, the 605 freeway is going to be next, and then Duarte after that. Uh, it does appear that we're kind of slowing down now, which, which again, that's something we've seen before, too. Is it? Uh, let's see, this is going to be an exit. Possibly Mount Olive Drive. We'll see if he... Uh, <clears throat> no, he's going to miss the Mount Olive Drive exit and uh, commit to the 605 South. It does appear that that's what we're doing now. So that's going to get him uh, away from his kind of hometown area and back towards where this pursuit started in the Monterey Park area. Still, uh, uh, we were showing the wrong speed there for a second, but now it's kind of leveled out to about 50 miles an hour. That's about what uh, CHP is calling on the ground uh, as we take this overpass from the 210 westbound over to the 605 south. Uh, and the 605 south is wide open right now. There's a little bit of traffic, a uh, little bit of volume there, very light volume, but nothing in the way of backup or traffic as we're now at freeway speeds with those three CHP units behind this uh, DUI suspect continuing southbound on the 605. And this takes some of the urgency out of uh, the, the necessity for an immediate apprehension here because he's going in a straight line. He's on a freeway. There's no cross traffic. He's not behaving too erratically on the freeway, except uh, by driving slowly. Uh, in fact, he's even got his hazards on, as, you, as we can see here from your, your vantage point. So uh, the idea that he is a danger to other people at the moment is minimal. There's not much traffic in, around, or ahead of him. And uh, there's no cross traffic, of course, because it's a freeway. And so uh, we'll see where this goes, but it does uh, allow the pursuing officers to kind of uh, take a breather, if you will. Yeah, uh, the uh, the uh, CHP officers can possibly kind of, you know, settle into a bit of a uh, pattern here. And when we do get onto a freeway and start going into these different uh, CHP areas, uh, then the CHP officers that have been in this pursuit can completely back off. And the other CHP officers uh, in that new area can kind of take over. Uh, so we'll see if that ends up being the case as we continue southbound on the 605 passing Arrow Highway. Still at these pretty slow speeds in that uh, slow lane, as you mentioned mark with those uh, emergency lights on you have the night sun from the CHP helicopter overhead and we have the opportunity for an off-ramp here uh, that's gonna be Arrow Highway okay I thought we passed Arrow Highway but there it is uh, so we are taking that exit slowing down getting in the right or excuse me the left hand lane to make a eastbound turn on Arrow Highway <clears throat> and we'll see what this driver does now he's squeezing past this other driver on the right Let's see what direction he's turning in. He waited for the green light, and now he's going, which yeah, has been the pattern. Yeah, now he's going eastbound on Arrow Highway, which, uh, yeah, th that that kind of is uh, par for the course with what we've seen from this pursuit, you know, just kind of doing circles in the San Gabriel Valley area. I wouldn't be surprised if the driver continues uh, northbound on the 605 and gets right back on the freeway, but it does appear that he has missed the opportunity for that. Now we're going to continue eastbound on Arrow Highway into uh, more of a, another commercial area south of the Santa Fe Dam here. Yeah, and there he is. You've got a pretty good shot of him there. Got the baseball cap on um, and uh, periodically gesturing toward the pursuing officers. Uh, has he thrown anything out the window at any point during this? You know, I have not seen anything to that effect, Mark. I've seen a lot of gestures, uh, one particularly offensive gesture uh, being uh, thrown out the window. Uh, that was earlier in the pursuit when we came uh, before we came on uh, television here, but nothing, no physical objects being thrown out the window. Although when we zoom into the back window, you can see there's there's a lot in there. He, he you know, unsure what uh, all of that is besides just uh, stuff in the back of the vehicle. So uh, if he wanted to throw stuff out the window, he could, but that does not appear to be uh, what this driver wants to do at this point. 
Uh, we've seen him appear, you know, earlier in this pursuit, he did appear a little bit more agitated. I haven't seen that in the past 10 or 15 or so minutes, making a southbound turn now on River Grade Road. And this is an area where we were about 20 minutes ago. We uh -huh. were doing circles on River Grade Road and Arrow Highway, uh, south of the uh, Santa Fe Dam. So this driver, well, clearly remembers this area from just a couple of minutes ago. Uh, and now we're back here doing circles in the area again. So now that that's the case, you have to wonder if CHP is going to uh, start getting another spike strip attempt in place. And we'll see if that uh, will be something that they'll decide to do pretty soon here. Okay. Back circling a familiar area. Speeds not excessive, 43 miles an hour by uh, our Air 7's estimation as he rounds that curve and uh, continues back into this area with which he has been uh, somewhat familiar, at least indicating to us that he is familiar with it uh, by circling it and uh, making a right turn here. This is uh, not a residential area. This looks like a bridge over uh, uh, whatever that is. I guess, is that the San Gabriel River right there? Yeah, it looks like it could be. And, uh, yeah, th this is this is just south of the Santa Fe Dam, Mark, mm -hmm. uh, where that uh, you have Live Oak Avenue that crosses over it, and we're we're heading back towards the 605 right now. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, that's exactly where this driver is trying to go uh, to try and get back to that familiar area. As we see a red light there, we're going to come to a complete stop. No surprise there because we've uh, we've seen that constantly in this pursuit. Uh, and after that will be an option to possibly get back on that 605 freeway. Yeah, Coming so th there he is, now. completely stopped, got his hazards on. Apparently the lights turned green, now he's going. Maybe he thinks that if he starts obeying the rules, they'll leave him alone. Um, that That's flawed thinking. Because that's not going to work. Um, so here he goes, he's passing through another green light. He just passed over that uh, over the freeway. And it's some question about what, what options remain in front of him now. The speed limit on the street, as you can see, 45 miles an hour, looks like he's going quite a bit below that. On Live Oak Avenue in the eastern San Gabriel Valley, being pursued by uh, several CHP officers. This began um, in the Monterey Park area with a DUI suspect who has at times behaved erratically. The speeds have been moderate, uh, moderate to low. There has been some behavior that's been uh, pretty, uh, pretty strange where he would stop and make gestures, where he would uh, uh, do, do things like that, but, uh, and stop for as many as uh, a few minutes at a time. But as far as a danger to the public, we have not seen much of that. The speeds have not been uh, overly excessive. The maneuvers have not been overly dangerous but he is believed to be under the influence and he's not stopping. And just the fact that he's under the influence means that he does pose a danger to the, uh, to the public and it's not something they can necessarily let go right now. So that's why they're pursuing him on this Friday evening in Southern California, 11.28 p.m., almost 11.29, where this has uh, gone on now for uh, the better part of an hour, I would think now, Gabe, right? Yeah, Mark, uh, this thing started uh, close to the top of the 10 o'clock hour with Monterey Park PD in the Monterey Park area. They wanted to initially pull him over for uh, suspected DUI as we approach the uh, Arrow Highway and Avenida Barbosa intersection coming back eastbound now. Uh, uh, let's see there. You have one of the local PDs here. I believe that's going to be Irwindale PD. They I uh, thought they were going to look at getting involved here, but uh, on second thought, CHP doesn't usually allow that. They don't usually lo uh, like local departments to get involved when they are the primary in a uh, particular pursuit. They want to maintain control over uh, anything and everything that uh, happens in terms of how the pursuit ends and uh, tactics that they use and so on and so forth. Uh, as we continue picking up a little bit of speed here, west, uh, excuse me, eastbound on Arrow Highway, back towards the 605. Uh, and yeah, Mark, this thing has been going on for close to 90 minutes. Uh, Monterey Park started it. We uh, were kind of dancing around West Covina. We came northbound on the 605, did circles around, around Duarte, did circles around Irwindale. Uh, and now we're back south of the Santa Fe Dam, approaching the 605 right now. I think there's an option for this driver to get on the 605 north just past the bridge here and there's that on-ramp we'll see if he decides to take it I, I'd be uh, well I guess we'll just find out together here seconds away and he decides to stay 
on Arrow Highway and continue eastbound. So at this point, my suspicion is that this driver is just trying to delay the inevitable. He knows he's going to get pulled over and he knows he's in trouble, uh, but he's just trying to delay that as long as he can, staying in areas that he's familiar with, not doing anything particularly dangerous as we see that one CHP unit get very close to the bumper, possibly going for a pit maneuver finally in this pursuit. And we see the driver pull away a little bit, coming back towards the 605, picking up speeds, looking like going about 50 miles an hour. And we're going to take the on-ramp there, the on-ramp to the 605 north. And that's where I thought this one was going to go the whole time. And here we go, back northbound on the 605. Uh, the next exit or opportunity to uh, go a different way will be that 210 freeway. So we'll see what happens there. We're ramping up to about 60 miles an hour. And the freeway right here uh, is pretty much empty because CHP is blocking traffic behind this pursuit as we see him kind of leaning to the right, leaning to that far right shoulder. And this is almost a carbon copy. Uh, there's a big rig up ahead. We'll see if the driver decides uh, if that will affect him at all, it does not appear so. <clears throat> and this is almost a carbon copy of what we saw about an hour ago in this pursuit. The driver was in that slow lane. The driver even got onto the uh, sh uh, shoulder, all the way to the right shoulder, and came to a complete stop there and was stopped there for about uh, almost a good five minutes. And CHP thought uh, that was going to be it, but then the driver continued on. Um, uh, Gabe, really quick. So, yep. We're going to uh, get Shayla Girardin in here. She's going to talk about the weekend weather that is coming up. We're going to keep the uh, pursuit on the screen on the left and Shayla on the right, as you can see. Shayla, what can you tell us about this rain that's coming? All right, we have a lot heading our way this weekend, so we'll keep it quick, but want to keep you guys updated on this storm system. You can see uh, already really moving through Northern California and starting to see some thunderstorms uh, uh, developing in Central California as well. Not quite making it to us just yet, but all of that is going to change as we head into the overnight hours. So you can see daytime up in the corner here, that storm system continuing to pr uh, pr
don't know of any agencies that have actually joined in the pursuit other than the Highway Patrol. Uh, even though they are on surface streets at this point, uh, the Highway Patrol is still the lead agency. You've got two, three units uh, right now immediately behind it and uh, perhaps some others trailing and there might be local agencies involved in that part uh, of the pursuit. Monterey Park was the original uh, location where this took place. And let's get more from Gabe Santos in Air 7 HD. Gabe. Mark, uh, you, you have that right. This did start with Monterey Park. It was a DUI suspect, and uh, we've just seen some very erratic behavior, as now you see this driver going through an alleyway. It looks like to the east of Motor Avenue. Uh, and this kind of beha behavior that's just very hard for uh, Highway Patrol to uh, predict, that's what we've been seeing here. And, you know, when you say this was a uh, DUI driver, this, this uh, driver's kind of, you know, giving reason for that uh, estimation because of this just erratic behavior. We've seen the driver gesturing out the window. Uh, we saw the driver a few minutes ago actually on the wrong side of the road uh, before making a left turn into a parking uh, area inside of a business park. Um, and CHP has been staying pretty close behind this suspect. And when CHP does that, you usually expect them to take uh, some kind of action to bring this to an end. We've seen them do a pit maneuver on a freeway out in uh, the West Valley. Uh, so we've definitely seen um, more aggressive pursuit tactics from CHP before. Uh, so uh, what we're unsure of right now is why CHP is taking a more relaxed approach with this suspect. Maybe they know something about this uh, driver's uh, mental state that we don't, and that could be why they're deciding to kind of lay back a little bit and just kind of follow closely and keep an eye on the suspect. As you see him kind of wave out the window, that was kind of odd. Uh, and we're making a right turn now going eastbound. Uh, that might be an on-ramp to the 210 freeway, and yes, it is. So we're going to go eastbound on the 210 freeway. Um, this is going to be a new area for us in this in this pursuit. We've been on the 605. We've been on the 210 from Duarte through Irwindale. But now we're on the 210 eastbound, continuing eastbound. Uh, we're going to hit Glendora and other neighborhoods after that if we continue in this direction. And that might be why kind of CHP has uh, maintained their control of this pursuit because of the proximity to the area freeways. And usually when CHP uh, maintains control of a pursuit, Mark, you were mentioning, uh, other uh, local agencies in the area. When uh, CHP has, uh, when they're primary, it's called, in a pursuit, they won't allow any of these other jurisdictions to really do anything else for the pursuit. They want complete control over their pursuit incident, so to speak. Uh, so they will maintain control of it. And then when CHP uh, doesn't want it anymore, when it gets off the freeway, then they'll let the local agencies take over and deal with it from there. As now we see this driver all the way on the shoulder with his right turn signal on. <laughs> Looks like there's going to be an on-ramp here for uh, another exit. And just this uh, for Vernon Avenue. So just this very odd behavior from this driver as we continue to circle this north northern San Gabriel Valley. It does appear that he is under the influence just by the what he's doing. I mean, if you're being pursued by the police and you're not stopping uh, and using his turn signals, uh, that, that does seem a little bit odd, but this has been odd from the beginning. Um, some of the behaviors that, that you and uh, we have observed here. He's turning left now. Uh, this is uh, 3rd Street. Continuing yeah, here, this looks like residential. Go ahead. Yeah, we're going to get into kind of a residential Azusa, uh, especially if this driver turns north, and there he goes turning north. Uh, there's another guy on a bicycle getting a little too close for comfort to this pursuit as we go over the 210 freeway, and uh, the north part of the 210 freeway is going to be more residential Azusa, uh, so things could get interesting if we stay there, but nope, we're going to get back onto the freeway, back onto the westbound 210, uh, continuing back towards the 605 as we get kind of a close-up shot here of the inside of the vehicle. You can see there, it doesn't appear any of the windows are tinted. So throughout this pursuit, we've kind of been able to get a good idea of uh, the fact that there's just one person inside, um, but there does appear to be a lot of kind of objects in the back seat and a lot of objects in the passenger seat uh, that, uh, you know, you just have to wonder what that's all about. And you have to wonder what's going through this uh, pursuit driver's mind right now, just kind of, you know, uh, stretching his last moments of freedom out for as long as he can uh, as we continue westbound on the 210 back 
uh, eventually towards the 605, although we do have the option to get off on Irwindale. There's some uh, other traffic there that's getting in the way, but they think better of it and pull over onto the right shoulder as the driver continues in that number three lane. There's that option I was talking about to get off on Irwindale, and that was a pretty aggressive maneuver, swinging two lanes over to take that off ramp. I'm not sure, okay, the, the other CHP the other CHP units were able to uh, keep up with him there uh, as we kind of made an aggressive maneuver to get off on the freeway, off, off of the freeway onto Irwindale, making a northbound turn now. And uh, the driver will have the option to take Foothill to get back towards Duarte. Use the truck as a screen to uh, kind of try to fake the officers out because he made that sudden move when he got around the truck to uh, take the off ramp as if uh, these officers hadn't seen that sort of maneuver before. It didn't work, of course. They're still right behind him. And he has stopped very yeah, all the, uh, all, appropriately. All the CHP officers were able to stay very close behind this uh, suspect. As you can see, they're pulling up again now. You have that lead officer. Uh, they have, uh, you know, one foot on the door because they've, they've seen this pursuit throughout. They've seen him stop and then go again. So... Uh, that's kind of interesting to see. They're not getting completely out of the vehicle anymore. They're still staying in their seats, uh, ready to move when this driver continues on again. Yeah, nobody's getting out yet, it looks like, because um, he's just waiting for the light. And as soon as, I'm, I'm betting as soon as the light turns green, he's going to, the, the person in front of him is going to go, and then he's going to go. So they kind of, they need to stay in their, in their, their pursuit, their, their law enforcement vehicles. Yep, and yep, there, there that, that vehicle in front moved, and mm -hmm. uh, he made a U-turn. That was kind of interesting. And now this driver is going to enter the Irwindale and Foothill Boulevard intersection, which is a very large intersection out here in the San Gabriel Valley. And we're going to continue through uh, making a westbound turn. CHP has the eastbound lanes blocked uh, as we continue westbound now. And the next town over, that's going to be uh, back towards Duarte, but we're kind of slowing down almost to a complete stop again. There's nothing in front of the uh, pursuit suspect. There's nothing in front of the vehicle. There's nothing uh, to make him stop, but that's what he's doing. He's coming to a complete stop in the middle of the road, um, or at least getting close to a complete stop and then continuing on again. And now we're just kind of inching forward at uh, between five to 10 miles an hour uh, with these three CHP units very close behind him. And they, you know, th you, you, you have to wonder why they don't just do a pit maneuver right now where it seems incredibly safe to do so. Uh, but once again, maybe they know something that we don't. Yeah. Uh, you almost wonder whether a spike strip, you know, this, this, we've been through this area before. I'm starting to recognize these intersections uh, even from the air uh, visually that we've kind of been through before. And I'm wondering if they would be able at this point to kind of predict his behavior and set up a spike strip ahead of him. Yeah, and uh, CHP does have units in the Duarte area because, uh, as we mentioned earlier on, um, this vehicle, come the uh, license plate is registered to a Duarte address. Uh, so they have units in the area, and they uh, I haven't heard specifically if they're uh, calling out that far ahead to have uh, units on Foothill Boulevard to try and uh, do spike strips there. Josh looking ahead with our camera to see if there's anybody there. There is one patrol unit there on the side of the road, so that may be uh, someone setting up for a spike strip there. We'll see if uh, someone jumps out and oh, does that. Look at that. The driver there's comes a spike to a complete strip stop. on the road. He's, he there's, sees the officer and he sees the spike strip. There's the strip. And now he's reversing. Okay. He's reversing away from the spike strip, and that CHP unit makes contact look with the bumper. At that. And the driver is trying to get out away from the spike strip, and he does it. He continues on. Look at that. I'm not sure he, we made any contact with that spike strip. He was going so slowly that he could see it and was able to stop in time. Wow. Yeah, I've, I've, I've never seen a slow speed pursuit work out in that way where a driver can just uh, go slow enough to see the spike strip. <laughs> uh, I didn't even see the spike strip from up here, but... Uh, you know, you, you could probably see it on bigger uh, screens as we come to a complete stop again on Encanto Parkway. Uh, this looks to be kind of a residential area just uh, west of the Santa Fe Dam. And we're going to we're just going to be stopped here for some reason. All right, I'm curious to see. Yep. Guns are drawn. I'm curious to see as we move Air 7 to the driver's side if uh, the driver is communicating out the window. Uh, which he has done at multiple uh, uh, insta uh, instances in this pursuit. 
uh, as we are on Los Lomas Road, and there really isn't an option for this driver to do anything unless he continues towards Huntington Drive, which is really nothing blocking him in front unless there's a CHP unit up ahead, which I don't see just glancing at the uh, windshield of Air 7 HD. I don't see anybody right there up ahead. Oh. And oh, there's another an spike strip. Yep. Oh, look at that. Yep, we have another spike strip here, which appears to be between the front and the rear tires. And uh, CHP was able to sneak that in. And this may be their best opportunity to bring this thing to an end to finally uh, not puncture a tire, at least, but get the spike strip in the position to puncture a tire if this driver decides to go forward at all. Well, there you go. Maybe that was uh, that's why they, they felt comfortable getting out of their vehicles this time, as opposed to at the uh, the red light about three minutes ago, because they saw them that he actually hit this spike strip. And uh, clearly they kind of figured he was going to be heading in this direction. And they uh, they got that. They, they had to have gotten the front tire. And uh, look at the look at the gestures now. Yeah. A lot of gestures out the window. The window's still raised up. He does appear to be trying to communicate with officers. Uh, and officers have their guns drawn, but they were, I think, Mark, they were able to sneak that spike strip in when the uh, vehicle was behind a tree just about a minute ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and that may have been the best opportunity that they have. Yep. And, oh, it looks like they are shooting possibly non-lethal rounds into the vehicle. And CHP now really ramping up the aggression. Now that they have the spike strip down, they're trying to shoot out the windows and try and really convince this driver to bring this thing to an end. So hopefully we'll see this thing come to an end here very shortly here as CHP now has all their tactics in place and uh, really kind of showing all their cards right now to uh, try and convince this guy to end it. And we've got to remember that we don't know whether he might have a weapon himself. What's, what's good is that he's got both hands sticking out of the window. He, so he is complying with that command from the officers to keep both hands visible where they can see him and they can be convinced that he's not reaching for a weapon. So his hands are visible now. They're probably telling him to uh, open the door and come out. And he's not doing that thus far. Maybe he at this point is afraid that if he brings one hand in, they're going to think he's reaching for something. But uh, he's got to comply with their, their, there's the less than lethal, uh, 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 I guess, shotgun type yep. uh, rifle that you would that they're using to yep. fire those less than lethal projectiles into the car and they just fired them at the windows the rear window uh, the rear like, windows yeah, on, yeah. Um, uh, which ahead. is which is interesting because oh and there goes another round right there wow. uh, that may have been um, a pepper ball round mm. which uh, obviously is trying to you know, uh, give the driver more reasons to exit the vehicle. And there he goes. He's lowering the window now because of that pepper ball. Uh, looking very agitated still, but still with those those hands out the window. Oh, he's trying to, he's trying like to he's, take his seatbelt off. Okay, yeah. there he goes. Yeah, it looks like he was tangled out in the seatbelt. Now he finally gets the door open. Pleading Both hands them. are out. He's yelling. He's yeah, saying, he, it looks he's like he's yelling, stop. Agitated. Looks like he's yelling, stop. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, they've been trying to get him to stop for two hours. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it, this is uh, just a very interesting end to a uh, very interesting pursuit. A lot of interesting behaviors displayed by this pursuit driver. And now it does appear that we are at the end of it as the driver kind of feels like there's nowhere else to go. Uh, we have one foot out the door, one foot out of the vehicle. And most importantly, both hands visible. I don't know both what that is visible. that he's grabbing. And, uh, that was his hat. Oh. You're his not hat get fell, to keep both the hands hat, still dude. visible. No. And officers are continuing to make call-outs. They're, they're, they're ordering him to back away from the vehicle and get out onto the ground. But it does appear that the suspect is still kind of flustered at this point as he kind of walks, you know, stepping away from the vehicle. That's a good sign. Hands are still up. Uh, but he, you know, he, he's still very aggravated, still not complying until right this second now right. where he gets on the ground. Hands behind his back. They probably are telling him to keep his hands out, but, you know, if he's DUI, if he's under the influence, then he's not listening, not, can't quite comply the way he should. Uh, and so now they're going to have to formulate their, their tactics and get it ready so that they can go in and actually, uh, they'll probably all go in at one time. And yeah, Mark, yeah, and we, we will we will watch this from a bit of a 
a, a moving shot here because we, perfect timing, we're out of fuel here in Air 7 HD. So uh, we're gonna kind of make our way back towards the airport as Josh, our photographer, holds the shot. It does look like officers have the handcuffs on the suspect and uh, they're calling a code four now with, uh, with perfect timing for us up here in Air 7 HD. All right, there he goes and uh, the chase is over. You have just enough, we have enough fuel to get back to the airport and fuel up. Gabe Santos, thank you very much for your reporting from Air 7 HD. The pursuit is over. The suspect taken into custody in Encanto Parkway in the Duarte area. No one has been hurt. That is it for our report. That is it for our stream at the moment on ABC7. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you back here Monday night.